So once you're juried in, you're, you can you can apply for their festival every year, which is we we encompass uh, 300 artists, best uh, wildlife artists all over the world, and the festival takes place during a week in Vancouver, Canada, and uh, it was postponed in pandemic one year, and then last year it was halfway open because Canada was pretty strict on their rules about going in and out so I didn't go the last two years but I've been three years pre preceding that uh, as an artist you can enter five pieces of artwork in the show uh, they will only accept two though and sometimes they will accept one for the book and the other one for the traveling show because the show tours the world so it goes to China it goes to a lot of different they goes to the Desert Sonora Museum in Arizona so when you when you give your artwork to that show, it's going to be gone a year if it doesn't sell. And and the prices are really good because it's all for conservation. As you can see, I would have owls on today <laughs> because a lot of my conservation efforts are have to do with the Owl Conservation Society, which 20% of a lot of my artwork goes to them. So uh, in fact, in that show, I've had it's really weird because I've had uh, accepted. I usually get. Well, only one year I didn't get two pieces. I, some years I only got one piece. But luckily I've been accepted every year. I mean, just to be accepted, they only pick 90 Ooh, artworks from the 300 people that are members. So there's only 90. So I've been lucky every year. And uh, this year I have, uh, you'll see the pieces I have for this year that they're submitted. I'll find out in May. But uh, two of my pieces in 2018 and 2019 were owls. And two of my other pieces for whatever years, 2020 and 2018, I think, were zebras. So I've gotten zebras in twice and owls in twice. And I've gotten a dolphin, uh, a common dolphin in, and something else, anyway. So uh, there's also a calendar. And the festival's amazing because these artists are just like incredible. And we do quick draws there, so they bring in the eagles and hawks and owls, <coughs> and, oh my gosh. and we and we and the, the artists paint them right there on you know where I can watch them paint them, and then they auction them off. Um, so it's a really great organization. We we're going on a cruise in 2023, which is Princess Cruise has teamed up with Arts for Conservation, so it's a wildlife cruise. So all it's all wildlife artists. That's what I like about AFC. It's just wildlife artists. It's not abstract, it's not, you know, any of this other stuff. It's wildlife and nature, so they have some landscapes, but mostly animals. Um, so we're going on, we're having a cruise in 2023, and of course the festival's on again this year, so I'm planning to go this year. Even if my, even if my pieces don't make the show, I'll go to the show, because it's just a fun weekend. They have Native American art, they have music, they have documentary films about wildlife, they, they have uh, birding excursions, they have uh, whale watching excursions out of uh, Vancouver and Seattle. Wow. Uh, so it's really, really neat. Uh, so that's one thing I do. So let's just get, get on with this. So uh, as you can see, I'm a muralist. You probably figured that out. That's a Santa Fe 10 Feathers mural, which has the names of the victims of the school high school shooting on the feathers. I graduated from Santa Fe High School, so when that happened, it hit me really hard. So what happened on that day was um, I took two, at the time I was teaching high school art, not in Santa Fe, but at another school, and I took two of my best artists, and I had a dream that night, they're the Santa Fe Indians. So uh, we painted that painting on canvas, me and two of my girls. I was in the middle, and they were on either side of me. So I was painting the Indian in the middle, and they were painting the horse, and then we painted the clouds. So we painted the painting in one day at my school, and then I, uh, I posted it on the internet, you know, this is my dream about what happened, blah, blah, blah. And when I did, it went viral. Of course, the news contacted me, and then the Santa Fe High School and the, the city contacted me. And the mayor wanted me to paint it on, the, on City Hall. So it's still there. It's on City Hall. And we painted it in uh, uh, three days. And I think I probably had ten, ten of my high school artists painting with me. We had the scaffolding. The whole city was going by honking and bringing us food and water. It was really amazing. And the parents, uh, they, they gave my students um, these big gift baskets and all this stuff at the uh, city hall meeting, the, what do you call it, the chamber of commerce meeting. And uh, they honored them and gave them little certificates and they gave them free tickets to the Gallatin County Fair and Rodeo, which is going on right now. So that happened, that happened in 2019 when my students got to go to that rodeo. And of course, they're inner city kids, they never even been to a rodeo before, uh, especially in a little small town. So um, anyway, so it was, it was a pretty amazing thing. And that, like I said, that mural's still there. It's the pride of Santa Fe. 
and it makes me feel really proud that that's out of all the murals I've done that's my most famous one it's the one I'm most proud of because of what it stands for and those parents they just really take care of it and uh, the, 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 you know they lost their, their, their children in that shooting uh, over here is the turtle for Galveston I'm, I'm working on my fourth turtle right now uh, that's the one for Jamaica Beach it's from the city hall in J Jamaica Beach so uh, a lot of a lot of towns you're gonna see more stuff like this public sculptures I do a lot of those a lot of these a lot of towns take civic pride and come in and look at these initiatives and I'll tell you more about that in a minute that's just some stuff. Uh, different mediums I mean there's scratch board and pencil and, and acrylic and watercolor I, I like to challenge myself and these are some of my books I have 28 books they're they're not art books they're fiction so the, the honeybee girl is my 2006 bestseller it still sells every week every week somewhere in the world so it's just been a really great little book it's kind of like the notebook if you've seen that movie mm -hmm. it's a book like that but it's about a small town in a little Santa Fe Texas and it's about a uh, bittersweet high school first love story. It, anybody can read it from age 12 on up. There's no sex. There's no violence. It's a, just a really sweet romantic love story. And same, the same thing with 10 Secrets of Love, which my high school girls love this book and I think only girls read it. <laughs> it's, it's 10 short stories about all different kinds of love and, so it, and some of them are really crazy. Uh, my other bestseller is Montana Miss right here. It's like a more of a uh, a thriller, adult love story, love triangle in Montana about a uh, wolf researcher that falls in love with a hitchhiker and he keeps a blind, beautiful blind girl in a cabin and takes care of her and it's like a love triangle but you don't really, there's a, there's a lot of secrets. Midnight Jungle is my newest book, came out in 2020. It's a fantasy epic young adult. It's 550 pages. It's a pretty massive monster. And Link Eye Creek is a short story collection for young adults which is very popular. Okay, so this was a piece that's going to the Artists for Conservation show this year, and this is how I started it. It's called Laboratory Cat, and I guess I can't, in this picture I hadn't even added the bird yet. There's no bird in this picture. So uh, this is when I first did the sketch, I first started working on it. That's an ocelot because we have them in South Texas, so I wanted to feature our South Texas cat. There's the bird. That's an Altamira Oriole. I added it because I wanted a bird. I wanted him to be searching for something in that in that lab. And the bird's like, ha ha, I'm behind you. Can't even see me. Uh, on those bottles. What, what's the size of that? That is 18 by 24. Oh, okay. And it's all ink. And on the bottles, the writing on the bottles is all my former and, and high school and college students that have ever worked on any mural with me. Oh, so I've painted a lot of murals and I've always had help with those students. I have a list of like 40 students throughout the years that have painted and I, when I do a mural I start calling them, the ones that are dependable, this, can you help me, can you help me, can you help me? And I'll pay them $10 an hour but they just they do for free. So on the bottles is all their names. So they can look up and find, where's my name? They go look and find the bottle with their name on it. Is this on paper? What is it on? Yes, it's on paper. It's ink on paper. And uh, yeah, it's an ocelot and an Altamira Oreo, which is found also down in South Texas. Mm -hmm. And so I, I watched an old Frankenstein movie and it gave me the idea of that lab. Like, I want to do a complicated lab with ink. Oh, yeah. So this is awesome. <clears throat> and the ocelot with all his spots, he almost blends in. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to give you an idea how we start these things. So that's a shot, uh, in, that's in Ndutu, which is uh, in Tanzania. And my wife took that photo. And so a, a lot of her reference photos I will use, but to me, I'm going to make them more creative and more challenging and, and change the dynamics. So when you see what I did with this, you're going to say, oh, it's way different. Okay, so I'll use the, the reference photo from the animal, but as you can see, usually it's a boring background. Mm -hmm. If you're in the Mazamara or you're in the Serengeti, a lot of it's just grass. <laughs> And it's you know far and everything. Not a lot. Not a lot to be interesting as far as the painting goes. So here's my painting called uh, Ndutu Cheetah and the Twisted Tree. And that tree is a tree that's actually beat up and knocked around by elephants. And I took a picture of it too. And then I, of course I added tons of more stuff to it. So that's how I start. I do a pencil drawing. And, I, and this this picture itself actually has ink an ink under undertone underneath the watercolor. So then when I start painting, I do the background first. So see, I'm starting to add background colors. Right now, my little, oh, it's not gonna be good. 
You know, it's like, ah. <laughs> so, yeah, it has a lot of, I use, and especially in trees, I, I'll use almost every color. And I just layer them and layer them and layer them. Let some of them peek through and some of them, you know, blend together. Mm -hmm. And so this is all watercolor. And uh, this, is, this is the other image that's going to AFC this year. Mm -hmm. And I really had fun doing the background, uh, the sky back there with the, the light. You know, because you got to leave things really light in watercolor. You can't, mm -hmm. you got to you gotta plan it out. So, uh, so that's the, the, that's the other piece. That's 18 by 24 too, okay. which is my favorite size. Okay. I used to always do 16 by 20s, but I really expanded because it seems like it's more restricting. Mm -hmm. I want the 18 by 24. So this is a uh, Von der Decken's hornbill mm -hmm. um, found in the Serengeti. And they're really cool birds. I see them a lot. And so I did a demo for one of the art leagues on Zoom. And it was a scratchboard demo. And I did it up this hornbill. And the demo looks like this. So, has anybody here do scratchboard? Anybody do scratchboard? Okay, so you, you, you try it. You, you, okay, well, you buy a, you buy ampersand clay board, which is kind of expensive. So, you know, that might be 20 bucks for that board, which is, I think, I don't know what size it is, 11 by 14, something like that. And so, you take your uh, drawing and you transfer it to the scratch board using chalk on the back of the paper so you're redrawing it mm -hmm. and then the chalk shows up like that and then of course it's kind of be kind of blurry or whatever so you want to like draw it and get all your details so you don't do a lot of details with with the chalk you know that chalk will just wipe off so you got to be careful so once you get that then you start scratching so uh, that's you know and in my photograph my wife had a photograph of that bird but he wasn't in a tree you know he, he was I don't know what he was sitting on rock or something but I wasn't you know I always change things so with scratch board, there's a lot of different tools. Some people will just use tattoo needles. They work really fine. Uh, I have a friend of mine that's an amazing scratch board artist, and she only uses an X-Acto knife, only. Uh, I use everything I can get my hands on, Brillo, wire, I mean, all kinds of stuff to get different textures and to get different techniques. Uh, I use tattoo needles, I use X-Acto knives, I use all that stuff. So I'm really, you can see these things in person, it's way, oh my God, scratch board is so eye-popping. But so I'm doing all the details first. Once again, I, most, a lot of artists I know, they always do the eye and the animal first because they say if the eye doesn't work, the whole picture's not gonna work. I'm the opposite, I'm delayed gratification. <laughs> the eye's gonna bring the whole thing to life, so I'm gonna do it last. I'll always do the eye last. So what brings the color in that image? There is no color, it's black and white. Well, it looks like color. It's black and white. The, the harder you scratch, the more white it gets. You have the five-year-old version that has color. Oh, because it's underneath and it's already made on the yeah. list. Now, <laughs> a, the other one that sees a lot of scratchboard artists, a lot of scratchboard artists will paint their scratchboards. You can paint that with, with uh, liquid ink. Yeah, you can make it look just like a painting. I put a little bit of that, but I, if scratchboard, I'm, you know, but I have a friend that every one of her paintings you'd think are just these like oil paintings or something, but they're scratchboards painted. Wow. So, yeah. And, it, it and it's not, it's not reversed it's not reverse like ink, like like I had a, one of my kids try to think think it was reverse, and he was doing a rose, so he was scratching all the the wrong areas, the backwards. It was backwards. Yeah. So it, it's not like that. You just scratch the whites and leave the darks. And, and, the, and the brown tone that we're seeing is just less white scratched off. Uh, it's probably a grayish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you could the the pressure less pressure. The you know, and plus. Everything's different, like texture on trees, texture on feathers. I have a Cape Buffalo with big curly hairs, you know, so it, it depends on, you know, what you're doing. Mm. So that's a better, clearer shot of when it was finished. Oh, no, see, it's not really a No, it was just a picture. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, you could paint that, yeah. though. You could take colored inks or even watercolor, and everywhere that it's white, it's going to take that paint. Where it's black, it won't. It's just going to roll off. And you can take that, turn that whole thing into color if you want it. So I, I have a few scratch boards with some color on them. How do you preserve that? I mean, you oh, you varnish them. You varnish. Yes, you varnish them, and you got to be careful because they scratch really. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so um, this is the turtle I just finished, but I wanted to show how I start them. So they have a template. Uh, once you become well known, you don't have to go through this process with with certain cities like Galveston. They already know me, so people request me, and and local. But uh, Wimberley, where I did the boot for the Birds of Texas of Wimberley, you probably see it on here. I've seen the boot. Okay, well, I'm designing a boot for Wimberley right now, but it's not like 
I'm getting that boot. No, because it's competition. You know, like yeah. a lot of artists that design it, and then the sponsors pick which one they like. Right. So the one I'm designing right now, I just I just started last night. I just got the email because they always send me. They always said we want you to you know turn in the design. So um, the I've had like four boot designs rejected, <coughs> which I like the designs, but they want something else. And I and I look at the ones they want, whatever. So um, to the I'm doing it for the the, the local theater. They want a boot in front of the theater because Wimberley has 50 boots, and so um, my, the one I boot that I've done right now, the Birds of Wimberley, is um, is on display at the uh, uh, what do you call it, the Visitor Center, right there at the beginning of town. Mm. Anyway, so the new one is the play theater. So I took all the iconic characters from the Broadway stage shows, and they're all over it. So it's <coughs> the Lion King, the, and not like the cartoon Lion King. I actually looked at images of, from the Broadway plays. Mm -hmm. They're real costumes. Alice in Wonderland, uh, Cinderella, a Phantom of the Opera. Anyway, they're all over, and I make curtains. I'm gonna make curtains on it, like they're, and I make a stage behind everything. But all the, they're all be like hodgepodge all over the boot. But anyway, so this is the boot for um, uh, Point West in Galveston. It's a million dollar community, gated community, and they have a color code. So when I first designed this boot, I wasn't designing it for them. I was just designing it, and I knew somebody would pick it. And so I, my colors were very dark. And they changed the color pattern because they wanted like Easter egg, like pastels. That's my original color oh. scheme, which I thought was powerful, oh, wow. bursting, yeah. boom, bright. I loved it. Yeah. So when Joni came to me and said, hey, they love your design. They want your boot, but they don't want those colors. And I'm like, man, that's what makes oh. it fine, those colors. Yeah. Yeah. And so I had, man, I don't know. I, I said, okay, okay. <laughs> so, pretty. see, I had to mute the colors, you know. Yeah. So I, it, it ended up really cool, but like I said, I had like that blue behind those dolphins. I had to repaint. I had to repaint a lot of times because the colors were still too popping, eye popping. So what are these made of? Uh, fiberglass and resin, and they have metal inside of them. So Galveston has over 50 turtles, and I've done four of them. So, so I'm sorry. So do you make the turtle itself? No, or you just they have it? a company like in Nebraska that does that. Okay. Yeah. But there, it's an identity for the island. It's a fundraiser. Yeah. It's, it's just really, it's a cool thing. And those turtles all over the island are free. So this is a free one. I did it for the Houston Audubon Rapture and Education Center because I do a lot of work for Houston Audubon and the Fish and Wildlife Service. And so I took a hundred of the most popular birds that live in Texas in their regions and designed the state of Texas. It's an eight foot by eight foot mural. And if you want to see it, it's at the Houston Raptor and Education Center where they have all the the ambassador birds that can't be released into the wild, they have like owls with one wing and the one eye, or, and they have red-tailed hawks, and they have vultures, and they have... Where is that? That is on, by, you know, a park place in Broadway on 45 is? It's only like a, a block off of 45 right there at park place, 610 and 45 south. Okay. Yeah. People don't even know it's back there. It's like only a one-acre plot, and it's right there on mm -hmm. Buffalo Bayou, and the whole back of that's a nature center, and they have all these flight cages. In fact. I did all the backgrounds for every bird's flight cage. They're big murals, you know, to make it look like. And what's this. the name of the place? I'm sorry. Houston Audubon Raptor and Education Center. I think it only costs like a couple dollars to get in, but they have like, I got this shirt there. <laughs> but they have ambassador birds, and I use their birds a lot because I help them out a lot. They let me use their birds. So, like, let's say I go to an art league, like we went to Baytown. Well, I bring in an owl and a hawk, and all the Baytown art league members show up. And we have they pay, and then we have a workshop, and they paint live oh, on canvas, wow. and I lead the workshop. Huh, cool. I've done that a lot, especially with high school kids. We have a lot of workshops like that because they like seeing those cool. live birds. So there we are painting oh, it. Nice. That's how all the birds. I have have shirts too. They're shirts with the nice. with the finished one on. There's a little Very close up cool. of all the little birds, and I had maybe ten different people painting the birds. Mm -hmm. and that's it at the install, and that that's what it looks like. Really, really pretty. And they'll bring out the birds. They also have bird shoot days where they'll, there's certain days of the month, they'll say, hey, 9 to 11, we're going to have, anybody wants to come out, it's so much money, I don't know much, what it costs, 30 bucks, whatever. You bring out your camera and they will take each bird out and set them on trees and you can take all the photography you want and get good yeah. references. I'm showing you here that this is one of their owls and I'm going to show you the painting I did from this photograph. So this, as you can see, it's on wood. It's on one of those wood panel canvases. I like painting on that way better than canvas because it doesn't have those little bumps all over it. It's smooth. I, I love that smoothness. So this bird is painted on that wood canvas. This is about halfway in. 
Get it up. Yeah, this. Kind of it's acrylic. There's the final paint. Uh -huh. So that's acrylic. Uh, I think that's a small one. I think it's like 12 by 16. Mm -hmm. I love painting on that wood. All my best paintings, I never realized this. I just had a show. A hundred. I had 101 paintings in the, the gallery in Clute. And I had a, a, a six-week show there called Animalia uh, Beyond the Jungle. And it was awesome because I sold 22 paintings. Oh, wow. Yes. They said I broke right. every attendance record, over 100 yeah. people a day. Whoa. I was shocked. I was like, what? <laughs> sold some paintings I missed already that I didn't want to sell. But, but you know, um, that painting right there, I'll show you. I, I had not for sale on that one because it's one of my favorites. But anyway, uh, I, when, I, when I was there and different people would show up, I noticed that everybody's favorite paintings and my, all my favorite paintings are on wood. Because there'd be a canvas one right next to a wood one, like, oh, I like this one. Like, and as I looked around, I noticed every one of my favorite paintings are on the wood. So I paint better on that smooth surface. Yeah, I can't get my kind of detail with those little bumps. It, bo it bothers me. So yeah, I, I try to paint on wood when I can. So these are the, this is the Heron Project. The city of Dickinson has a, a, a building, probably about as big as this building. It's just vacant. It's just a vacant building. And they said, we're going to store the herons in there, and all you artists, y'all can work on them in there. It's oh. your own private studio. Mm -hmm. And it's AC, and it's just an empty building. Yeah. And so I'm still using it as my studio. <laughs> so uh, we painted all the herons in there, and you know, different artists would be there at different times, and we'd have music playing, and we'd just hang out and paint all day. It was awesome. I'd bring my students in there, let me, they'd help me paint, and uh, I'll, I'm going to paint the next heron in there. I already designed it as a Texas heron. And then uh, my, my turtle, I'm going to paint it in there too. I, that turtle y'all just saw, I painted it in there at the same time. I added it in there too. So that was pretty cool. The city of Dickinson let us do that. This is how I figure out things. So I'm, when I design my hair, I'm like, I don't know what background color I want. So I just do one with every background color that I think might look good. And then I just start asking people, which one do you like? Which one do you like? Which one do you like? Yeah, everybody like the black one. I like the black one. So that's how you like, that's how you like design something like that. That's what the hair looks like when they're white. But you can see my little pencil marks all over it because uh -huh. I've drawn all over it. Now who, another, makes, who makes those for you? People in Nebraska. Some really? Company. Yeah, some Isn't company. Something? Yeah, I, I drew it huh. and, and they sent back a, a computer design and then I said, well, change this, change this, and then they sent it back again and we approved it. And then they make them. Is it uh, chalk or, or is it plastic? Or? It's fiberglass and resin. Fiber. Oh, yeah, and there's metal inside there too. Uh -huh. They're not real heavy though. I, I just get like this and pick them up and carry uh -huh. them. The, turtle, the turtle's kind of awkward because he's so weird, but he's not really that heavy. Hmm. Um, anyway, so the he's thing cute. about. If you can't draw, you, it's hard to use projectors on these things because you notice how they, they're not flat. Mm -hmm. So it's just going to distort things. Yeah. So you have to be able to actually draw on there because you've got all those curves. So the drawing part is the hardest part. The painting part is easier once you've got everything drawn on there. Mm -hmm. So this is on the base. I, I want, Dickinson is famous for their gators. Their football team is called the Dickinson Gators. Mm -hmm. So I put a little baby gator mm -hmm. on the bottom just to in, incorporate that in there. <laughs> so there's a little gator yeah, on the bottom. These, is this acrylic? Acrylic, I use acrylic, yeah. Like uh, like artist acrylic or house paint acrylic? I use uh, Golden brand. It's a high quality, plus more, but it's not. Like the murals I'm doing right now, those traffic boxes, that company will let you only use latex outside paint. They won't let oh. you use acrylic. I don't know why. I mean, I like, I use acrylic on every mural I've ever done, but they want me to use house paint. And it's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really expensive. Yeah. I bought. Five cans, black, white, red, yellow, blue, and green. Six cans. It was two hundred and something dollars. They give you a two hundred two hundred fifty dollars stipend for the paint, though. And I did two two of the murals with that with the same paint, but I ran out of the green, so I just mixed the yellow, blue, made yeah. green. But uh, anyway, that's what it looks like before you start painting, and then you start painting on it. And they coat all these things with a clear coat that they use on cars. Mm -hmm. ah. Yeah, so you'll see what it looks like when it's clear coated. Mm -hmm. So there's some of the other artist mm -hmm. works. Mm -hmm. See, look how shiny it is. Oh, That's after yeah. the clear coat. Yeah, when you see them in person, you're like, whoa, they're eye popping. Yeah, they're really, so who really clear cool. Coats it? Uh, who does it? Yeah. Uh, a gay Pontiac did it for the city. Ah. Card, car dealers do gotcha. it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So here's some of my, you know, trips around the world, riding an elephant in Nepal and holding sloths in Belize. I'm always with animals. So this is my fantastic wife of 22 years that is a great photographer and uh, she takes all the reference photos and she loves the outdoors like I do. So we've been everywhere from Galapagos to Africa to Australia, you name it, Nepal. All right, now I wanted to show you this one because I like to experiment and do weird things. This is also on a board but it's spray paint, mm. background spray paint. Mm -hmm. And on and spray paint has a shiny quality. When you hit the light, it kind of like mm -hmm. turns, mm -hmm. you know. But then I used acrylic and white ink mm -hmm. on the birds oh, wow. and the branch. Mm -hmm. And when you see the picture in person, it's really 3D because of that background. Yeah. So yeah. I did a few more paintings like that with that spray paint background. It's pretty interesting. Can spray paint? Yep. I do mosaics too. Well, this this is big. It's it's probably that size, and I did it for the school that I was teaching at. They're the cougars. The actual eyes are actual taxidermist cougar eyes. I ordered them. So how I do those is I draw it on the, the contact cement board. I draw it. Then I have my students paint it in the sections where the colors are. So it's all color coded and painted first. Mm -hmm. And then they just match up and try to find tiles that will match up to those color sections and glue them. So they're like putting together a big jigsaw puzzle. Mm -hmm. So they have fun doing that. <clears throat> I wanted to include this in here because I'm really big in collage. In, in college, uh, my best original artwork and student of the year was all in collage my senior year at UH. And so this is collage and uh, it's just paper. It's just, I Xerox a bunch of different pictures and cut them up and put them together. And sometimes I do realistic ones where I just find, make rock shapes and trees and make all, make it look like a realistic photograph. But it's just fun for me and I like teaching it to my kids. Uh, I want to include this because it's very, I don't know, to me it's like something I would never do on my own. It was commissioned. So this is old. I think it, I don't know what that date down there says, but it might be 2011, no, 2010, so it's old. Mm -hmm. I had to duplicate an old Polaroid photograph that was just totally messed up. I mean, oh, wow. it was ugly. I a little girl on her horse. It was this lady's grandmother or something way back in the day. And so I had to duplicate it, and I did it with watercolor. And I, I don't know, I like how it turned out, because if you saw the photograph, you know, but it doesn't look like any of my other art. It looks like nothing that I've ever done. So this is acrylic on canvas. And this is, a, a, I, I took uh, Frank Fazetta, my favorite artist of all time. And I took uh, Alphonse Mucha, the Art Nouveau designs. And he, had a, 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 he has a painting called The Seasons with four different girls and flowers and stuff. So I took Frazetta women in backgrounds and put them in a Mucha design. So it's my seasons. Hmm. You can probably figure out the seasons pretty easily. <laughs> I have a friend who's a Star Wars crazy person. <laughs> her name is Sasha, and she's funny. And she was a science teacher in our school. And every year for her birthday, I would do her a, uh, a Star Wars painting and give it to her. <laughs> so she has all my Star Wars paintings. And so I did this one for her a couple of years ago. I thought it was just kind of cool. Uh, this is a weird painting. Uh, it's acrylic and watercolor together. And it's a tentative cover for my new book, Keo, uh, which is a novel I'm 274 pages into right now. It's kind of like a combination. If you took a character, if you took Moana and Tarzan and put them in one guy's body, that's the character. It's that kind of a, it's that kind of a book. It's set in prehistoric times. And what, what, did, what did you paint for? What did you use? A board. A board, yeah. Okay. This is also a painting from Keo. This is on board too. This happens in, in the in the story where a mammoth scatters a bunch of pterodactyls. And I, I always thought, I thought maybe I'd use that for the back cover. I don't know. I always like that painting. Do you do watercolor on the board? I haven't ever done that. No. I didn't know if you used the ground and mm -hmm. do it This is scratch board. Oh, uh, nice. The Angels of the Marsh won a few awards. And it's a backlit photography early morning that my wife did, 
did some shots and I was like, hey, I want to scratch board that. It's pretty cool. But it was challenging to do these dark, you know, under the grayish colors under the wings. It still get detailed, but not scratch hard enough where it turns out white. Okay, so now that you see this, you can pick what's hanging off, but that's ink. Mm -hmm. oh. And uh, that's the, the original is ink. So I had an idea. I liked the original so much and it was ink. I said, you know what? I'm going to paint my ink. But I didn't want to paint the original. It was like, too much work. So I went and had a copy made, a bigger copy made. And I watercolored it. And when I found out when you make the copies, all those black, watercolor won't, won't stay on the black, which is good because all that shows through. And I've used that technique so many times since then. So that's this painting right here. And I won't sell it because I love it. It's won some best of shows, a lot of awards. Oh, wow. And so it was a big, it was a big ink copy of that watercolor. And it's really detailed. But uh, I, I just love this painting. It hangs right when you walk inside my house. The lights reflecting on the glass. And so, you know, you know, the light back. so, what did they yeah. print the printed on 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 the Week or so? <laughs> yeah. Do you ever sleep? Yeah, really? People always ask me. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So you mostly paint with watercolor and acrylics, never oil? Never oil. I have one oil painting. I, I have no patience to wait for stuff to dry. No way. I want my paint to dry quick and I want to mix it and blend it and layer it. Yeah. I love watercolor. Watercolor is my favorite. But I can do like four or five acrylic paintings in the same time it takes me to do one watercolor <laughs> because the watercolor is so tiny. Yeah. But I love the way they turn out. Yeah. Now my best medium, if you've been to my website you might have figured it out. I've been doing ink since the 80s. And my ink, that's what always wins and gets in shows most of the time is my inks. I use those little I used to use a pen called Alvin, Alvin uh, Tech Liner, but they quit making them last year. So now I switched over to the Microns. Very similar, just I thought the Tech Liners were higher quality, and the ink lasted longer, and the tips weren't so... I press really hard, sometimes I've messed the tips up. That's an old ink one right there, Buffalo. That's a scratch board. Wow. That's a scratch board, Buffalo. We have 